play when we're, we should be talking about war and peace. But Charles, even the political argument seems to fall short because much of the politics here seems to indicate that America would like all our troops back from Afghanistan if you ask in a poll. Either you're going to do it or don't do it. But most people would say, bring them home. Well, one of the reasons for that is if you get zero leadership of the president, people, are, Americans, are always going to want to be away from war, not engage in war, or withdraw from war. They're not a warlike people. War is a terrible endeavor, and it requires a commitment of the president. If there's none, and the president has not made a single speech of any importance since the December 1, speech on Afghanistan, of course there'll be no support. So he lets it go, and then his excuse is, well, I can't continue our engagement because there is no support. But that's a result of his own action. The Democrats speak about this. They always say the Republicans, the President Bush, he got us into two wars. The getting us into Afghanistan was unanimous by the American people, Democrats and Republicans, everybody. And what people don't sort of focus on is that three of all the, of, of every four Americans who died in Afghanistan has died in the Obama years with him, Commander-in-Chief. It's been his war. This is six years. It's not a war that somehow others started against the will of Americans and he had to continue. He chose. He says, I committed 180,000 troops in harm's way. Well, that, of course, is a way to include Afghanistan. In, in Iraq, in Afghanistan alone, there were about 30,000 troops. He brought it up to 111,000. And the question history is going to ask of him, why? What did you achieve with the tripling of troops and the large number of deaths that resulted? Quickly, Abby, do you think there is some more?